Did you know that the same type of authentication that makes it super easy for you to sign into things like Netflix on smart TVs is actually available in Entra and it can compromise your Microsoft 365 accounts in seconds if a Fisher decides to use this. Rue Campbell, Security MVP here for Threatscape and in this video we're going to explore device code flow in Entra and then we're going to talk about some simple ways you can defend against this risk. Let's get into it. All right, so we're going to start with the attack tool. Uh, we're going to use Token Tactics V2, and you can grab this from GitHub. Nice and easy. Good tool to understand how adversaries operate. Um, import the module, and then we're going to run this little command like here. And what this is going to do is this is just kind of going to hold my hand through what you would do if you were trying to fish a victim. We get this URL here, the device login. You'll see that this is normal Microsoft.com stuff, unlike adversary in the middles. The tokens that I'm about to steal, this isn't done through any type of reverse proxy or anything like that. This also makes it hard for defenders to rely on things like newly registered domains and defend against those. We're going to be, I know living off the land isn't exact terminology to use here, but that's basically the idea. So we need to fish our user into heading to this page, and then we basically need to tell them, hey, type in this code. Think of it like when you sign into Netflix on your TV. It's that authentication handover that happens. So I'm going to copy that code. Token Tactics is going to sit there and wait for my user to fall for it. We're going to wait for them to bite. Let's bounce over to our victim now. Yep. I fish them in any number of ways. A Teams message, a LinkedIn message, an email, because we all know that that's not perfect. I say, hey, user, uh, I need you to prove that you're still a real user in my tenant, and I'm the IT person punching this code, and user does it. We'll go ahead with that. It's going to ask them to authenticate. If they had previously authenticated, they may not see this. So we're going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to authenticate using 502 in this scenario. If I can fumble out and get my key. So I'm using a very secure form of authentication strength here. And yeah, I'm trying to sign into Microsoft Office. I'm a user. Sure, why not? I've signed in. As a user, I probably don't think twice about this. Hey, I've done what my IT told me to do. Now let's head back to that attack box. And um, we can see that if I scroll up, all of a sudden, boom, we got that bearer token. We get the scope of permissions that were associated with that. So we can do things such as grab files using Microsoft Graph API, grab mail, all that kind of stuff. And if you want to explore this in more detail, you can get a rough idea of what's going on here if you go on our YouTube channel and you watch our video on adversary in the middle and how token theft uh, works with that. Access token, that's what's going to allow us to do this attack. We have the keys to that user's account. We effectively get to run as that user. This is the default state for Entra. It does allow this device code flow it's built into the RFC standards and Entra honors that. Let's talk about defense now. I am going to jump over to the Entra admin center and we're going to look at conditional access. Conditional access, those of you who've subscribed to the YouTube channel know that this keeps coming up again and again and again because it is so fundamental to Entra ID security. I'm going to pick on a policy I got here currently in report only mode and it's called device code flow block. You can see where this is going. Let's click into that. We are going to head down in our settings here. We're going to go to conditions. We're going to go to authentication flows and you'll see here we got a couple options. We are interested in this one here. Device code flow. Does what it says on the tin. That way I just authenticated, did that kind of punch in the code, allow me to sign in on another device, that's device code flow. If I now were to set this to block access and put this policy on, as we can see over here, if I just kind of zoom in here and do my uh, little pointy thingies, here we go, turn that on, as opposed to report only mode, that would have stopped this attack dead in the water. So the solution is easy. You just go away and you enable conditional access policies for your users that prevent this. Couple things to consider though. You will see that we do have this in this tenant in report only mode for now. Report only mode is very, very useful because it allows you to assess what may happen to conditional access policies. Sure, you're still going to be at risk, but it lets you understand the implications before you go away and turn it on. So as an example, if you're using things like Teams devices or some VIP devices, those will actually use device code flow. And so if users are using those and you go away and block it, you're going to hit their business productivity. So the bottom line is consider report only mode unless you really, really know your environment well. But ultimately, you want to go away and you want to control device code flow and Entra ID. So hopefully this video has been informative to you. We're going to do a ton more stuff on conditional access on our Threatscape YouTube channel. And if you found this one useful, you might want to check out this other video we did on conditional access, commonly seen mistakes.